Which street in Penang used to be the haunt of prostitutes? Audiences found out at the book sharing session of Datuk Sri Wong Chun Wai, the author of Penang's History, My Story. Campbell Street is off Penang Road. Uh, in Hokkien, they call it Sin Ke, which is like New Road. Okay, Again, much of what is, in, is inside here, inside this particular book, is something that you will never see or read about in our textbooks because in Malaysia, we want to talk about sex. Even a little bit of sex, people get freaked out. Campbell Street is named after a lieutenant governor from Britain. Sin Ke, it means New Road. Okay, Hokkien, a new road. But at that time, Campbell Street was a red light area. So when they said Sin K, it also means new chicken. So because at that time, Campbell Street was a place with a lot of prostitutes. How is Penang connected to the movie Anna and the King? How did Anna went to Thailand? Her husband was working under Francis Light in Penang as an officer. So, Anna's husband died at a very young age. There she was in Penang, no job, nothing. It was at this point that they said, I think you should go to Siam, be a tutor in English, to the king of Thailand, king of Siam. So Anna left Penang to go to uh, Siam. The husband, the husband's body is now buried in Penang in the same cemetery as Captain Francis Light. So on that note... Which Georgetown Road is named after the only Malaysian to be nominated for the Nobel Prize for Medicine? Wong told the audiences that the road Jalan Wulente was named after Dr. Wulente, who was born in Penang in 1879. Dr. Wu produced a drug to treat opium patients and moved to China to address the pneumonic plague in the country, but he never made it into the Malaysia's history books. He became a very big name. He was invited to give talks around the world by many European countries who were really fascinated by the medicine he had produced, the drugs he had produced to stop the plague in China. And then he continued living in Shanghai. The war broke out. The Japanese came, bombed, bombed his house. And there was, at that point, he decided that that's it. I want to Bali Kampung. I want to come back to my old place, Penang. But he went to Ipo first, opened a clinic, and next you know, he ran into another trouble. This time, it's the companies. We were at the height of the emergency. The companies were going after him. So he says, no, that's it. I better go back to my island, Penang. And he stayed in Penang until he retired and he died. Very low profile, he never gave any interviews. He died in a very peaceful, and low-key manner. So of course, we go around checking. We ask the people who live in the neighborhood. You live in Jalan Wuliente. Have you heard of Jalan Wuliente? 90% says, I don't know who the hell is he, okay? But the point is this is that, this is a great man, fantastic man, brought great honors to this country, nothing in our history books. The audiences enjoyed the session very much. Uh, it's well said and I'm actually from Penang so I'd like to know more about it. I will read up on the books. I'm actually a history teacher too. Uh, I find this one very interesting. I'll share it with my students. Wonderful talk. Yeah, very, very personable person. I don't expect editors to be like that. He's a wonderful storyteller. <laughs> oh, very interesting, informative. Right? Uh, I mean, all machines should know about Penang history. Right? Uh, I mean, is, uh, he, I mean, the way he, he tells the story is very interesting. The book is not only for the people of Penang, but all Malaysians who treasure the need to keep history alive.